we're going to a guy named Rick's. We've been to Rick's before. You sent us there. Remember the guy that had the bubble cars? Yeah. Well, now he's interested in selling one of them. See this jacket? See this? Oh, the cars of distinction. Yeah. I yeah. bought this from him. Just, hey, ah, there, there he is. There you go. He's clean. He's polishing it. He's self in the car. He must want to sell it. Rick. Hey. What's up, man? What's going on? Hey, buddy. Hey, Mike. How you, you doing? You know, polished up. It's outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Look at this, Danny. Huh? Yeah. I love it, man. Even though I was here before and I saw the car, this is the first time that I'm actually seeing it. There's nothing inside of it. I can walk around it, and it's blown my mind. Oh my gosh. So last time we were here, this was buried in the garage. You gotta look in here. There's, uh, there's a little bit of everything. God, can you imagine driving this? This thing down the road, it, it's, it's unreal. I can't even unreal. imagine. Unreal. So why you got it all cleaned out I, and everything? I, You're polishing I, I, I the, tried to clean it up the top a little bit and everything. And tried to dust it off and make it look halfway decent. Look at those, man, look those, those seats, seats are man. crazy. <laughs> no, look at those seats. Just pick up the top. All right. And you just grab the handle and open her up. Here, let's see. What do they call it? The Ultimus? The Ultimus. Everybody saw the beauty in these cars when they first came out. They dominated the car shows and they were on the cover of every car magazine. But after they went away and were considered kind of novelties, they were pushed aside. Rick was one of the first guys that saw that they were significant in the history of transportation. So for him to think about wanting to sell one now is a huge deal. It's like the evolution of a collector. There's that hunting, gathering stage and finding these cars, coveting them. But then after living with them for a while, and experiencing them, then I think a collector, like even such as myself with some motorcycles, is feel like it's time. When I was talking to him on the phone, I could tell things were different. Will this chair hold me? Well, I hope so. <laughs> Look at this thing, man. Whoa. Man, that ain't even a chair. A it's, a, it's a strip right. of fabric. There we go. Ah, <laughs> you're so close to the ground, that's wild. No way, man. I like how they just took a stock steering wheel and cut it down. Yes. So do you remember the first bubble car you ever saw? Yeah, it was Starbird's uh, Predicta. That was the first one I ever seen. I bought that magazine, it was on the cover of it, and wow. No kidding, that was yep. it for you. Yep. There was something about discovering things like this in a magazine or at a car show where you can physically see it and maybe put your hands on it, you know? Just like when Rick saw his first bubble top car. It was like a light switch went on. It was etched in his brain. It was part of him all of a sudden. He never forgot that. And then later on in his adult life started acquiring these cars because they meant something to him. I mean, it's so wild how this stuff was being shown in the 50s and it was called futuristic, but I don't, do you, do you really believe anybody at that time thought that that was the future? Like really, like yeah, th no, th th that no. it was gonna ever go no, that way? No. It's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty wild. When I bought these, I was gonna restore these cars, but I was building everybody else's cars and my stuff was always on the bottom of the list. I enjoyed them when I had them, but I think it's time now to let them go and see somebody else have some fun with it. I mean, I love it. The last time we were here, you didn't have a number at all. This time you have put a number on it, and I very much appreciate that, I really do. Okay. I mean, because I know what a big deal it is. You've had this for a very long time. Here's what I'm thinking on the car. I think you know as well as I do that the car is, is worthy of restoration. Sure. 100%. And in order for someone to restore this car, they have to be into it for a number that makes sense to do it. I know you're asking 75 for it. 65 grand. No, it so takes 75 to buy it. Work with me a little bit, just a little bit. Work with me a little. I'm pretty much firm at that, Mike, it's 75. Look, Rick don't need to sell the car. The man knows what it's worth. Cars are his business. This is what he does day in, day out. So. I can't see us arguing on price too much. I mean, any more, it's gonna cost me 2,000 bucks just to move it. Hauling isn't cheap anymore. No, I know. Everything's up, fuel prices and everything. 
Obviously, it needs to be in an enclosed trailer. You got an enclosed trailer? Yes. Well, there you see. We're now we're kind of talking the same language. I got two of them. Seventy thousand dollars. Take seventy-five. <laughs> really? Take seventy-five, Mike. Have you priced it before? No, I haven't. You haven't? No. This is the first time you put yep. through a number on it? Yep. This is a lot of money to throw down for this car, but cars like this do not come up for sale very often. If I don't buy this car, the guy behind me will. Uh, I hate to say goodbye to it. Well, what do you think? I mean, you're, you're not gonna find another one like it, <laughs> right? I don't want to walk away from this and have Mike regret it, or regret it myself. I'll do the 75 if you can bring it to Tennessee. Let's try to make that work. I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so you're gonna lean into it. So I'll, I'll, I'll see because that see. would help a lot. I'll see if what I'm at 75 on it and you can bring it. That'd be huge. I'll see what I can do. Okay, then 75. Hot dog! It's done. <laughs> All right, man. It's All right, we're done. doing it. Yay. Man. Yeah. We got there. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, I'm happy it, it's going to go to a, a good home. It could have went to the scrapyard many years ago, but I saved it. I'm happy with that choice. OK. Yeah. I just want to get it to somebody that's going to restore it. We'll figure okay. that out together, maybe, you know? OK. There were tons of ideas that were generated on paper but never got made. But for some reason, this idea resonated with people. This car of the future has been given a future because of what Rick saw in it. To be able to buy a car like this, this historically significant, this unique, this different, this custom, is amazing. It's like a day-to-day -day treasure hunt. I'm out there looking for rusty gold. I'm looking for the unusual and impossible. It's back roads, it's dumpster diving, it's flea markets, it's people's homes.